Hi, my name is Craig Sikovsky, and I am an author of Everybody Pays a Vig, a mentor and an entrepreneur. And today uh, I'm going to be featured on the Online Prosperity Podcast. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you the all rounder himself public speaker, author, real estate uh, professional, and just about anything you can think of in the entrepreneurial realm, Craig Sotowski. Craig, my man, how are you doing? I'm fantastic. Thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. So obviously, if you're watching this show right now, you would understand that we're always bringing in interesting people that are out there helping um, other people have a happier existence or a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, people like Craig have been in and around. He's written a lot of books um, that help people be on the straight and narrow uh, with regards to work ethic and what it is that you actually have to give, um, you know, in order to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So we're going to be talking about really work ethic commandments for what is expected um, of an entrepreneur. And um, I've been speaking to Craig. He's a wealth of knowledge. Let's see what it is that we can come out um, with on this episode here. Now, I understand as an entrepreneur, you have to do more, you have to do it faster, um, you know, cheaper, better, faster in order for you to succeed. And entrepreneurs are at a significant output disadvantage. Sometimes your kids need your time, your employees need. Um, your time. So every task that you have to complete um, has to, um, you know, let go of something that's of, of value to you. So that's what we're going to be talking about and how um, we can leverage and understand how um, uh, we can get the most of our time and also uh, our output as entrepreneurs. Now, Craig, I could go on and on and talk about um, what we, we, we are excited to have you on the show for today. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you became, um, you know, the best selling author that you are today. So, um, my journey started in New Jersey in the United States. Uh, I grew up from an early age. I was molested when I was a young kid. Um, I learned about banking real early as an entrepreneur. Uh, I went bankrupt in my twenties. Um, you know, it's the entrepreneur story, man. You have your ups, you have your downs, you have all these trials and tribulations that I found, uh, once you get out of your stinking thinking and you put all of those stories behind you, you can actually, um, explore the entrepreneur spirit a lot easier, a lot freer, a lot lighter. If that makes any sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. So obviously all of this, um, movement and thank you for sharing the story by the way and all of this stuff learning the whole bankruptcy and um the you know episodes in your life and now you're an entrepreneur helped you to start getting things done um let us know what it is that uh really sort of motivates you to keep getting up even if um everything seems to be uh, pulling you down well, okay, so as I was explaining before, it gets me up. I have a beautiful wife and daughter, right? Um, I just survived cancer, 12 months clean. So I look at life a little bit different. I have my wife and my daughter. My daughter's 12. Um, I look at things from this point forward. So I don't even look back anymore. So I know as entrepreneurs, we run into problems every day. We're always putting out some kind of fire. And we think... Uh, and I've had a lot of discussions with entrepreneurs. We think about all the, the, the failures that we've had or all our insecurities about certain things that we're going to do. And what I, what I have found for myself is once I start looking at things from this point forward, there's no other outcome but success. We already know that, you know, um, laughter after, after crying comes laughter, right? So nobody laughs or cries in a different language. And that's my connection to humans. I love the human spirit. I love how people can overcome just about anything that's thrown at them. And I, I have uh, mastered the art of myself. Right. And that takes a lot of, that takes a lot of work. 
It really does. Absolutely. So you did mention in, a, in one of your sentences that um, a lot of entrepreneurs are always trying to put out fires. And, um, you know, there's the whole hustle culture. And I actually think that business is usually confused with actual hard work. And sometimes it's actually a symptom of, you know, lack of focus and avoiding to deal with difficult issues. Can you just walk us through um, what you think this whole culture of busy, busy, busy is actually um, a detriment to people's progress in life? Absolutely. We're, we're in an age of nothing but noise, right? So like as a, as a digital entrepreneur, we have to figure out the algorithms, the hashtags. We have to go to different neighborhoods online, right? And once we, once we go to different neighborhoods, like for me, hashtags, I, I use the, uh, the metaphors in real estate because that's what I know. So I know that a hashtag can be the ghetto, the rich area. It depends, right? It depends on the word. It depends on how many people are using that to hashtag something. So I look at that as a neighborhood. Is it a good neighborhood, a bad neighborhood? Do I want to invest my, whatever I'm focusing on, do I want to invest that in that neighborhood? It takes time. Um, another thing that I like to do is just explore and learn. I, I do my best work now at 53 years old with my mouth closed. I want to know what you know. I think we're all unique in our experience, right? I have things backwards. I think we're light seeking a human experience, not human seeking enlightenment. So with that, my, my whole mindset is different. I want to know what makes you tick. I want to know what makes you laugh, what makes you cry. I want to know the intrigueness that you have with your, not like this, right? Body language, 70% of body language is nonverbal. The communication is nonverbal. So as I'm speaking, my body language might tell you something different. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's, yeah, like you said, 70% of all communication is um, body language. And that's the reason why some people uh, laugh and cry universally. And it's not in a, in a different language that they're coming from. So that is like the most profound thing I've ever figured out in my life. I love, you know, I, the, the reason why I think I have a success rate in what I do is because I can relate to anybody. I could talk to the garbage man. I could talk to the CEO because what I've learned as an entrepreneur, and it's taken me a really long time to understand this, that we share so many similarities. Whether the guy that is just starting off complaining that there's not enough time in a day and not enough money to the guy that is, uh, has a lot of cash, but he just needs more because his project is bigger, right? So I understood from a really early age that if you needed a million dollars and I needed a thousand and you only had 900,000, I only had 900 bucks, we both shared the same emotion of being screwed. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to bridge that gap for the next 10%. And that's what I bring to the table. I give people the tools to help them with their mental arsenal to gain that 10%, to bring their life to the next level, to the next story, to the next crushing event in your business journey. <laughs> Absolutely. So obviously, I mean, uh, this is like, you're right. You're right. This is actually intriguing, uh, just listening to you and, 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 you know, the, the eloquence and the confidence that you have in sharing your story and, uh, this value, which we do appreciate by the way, Craig, you did mention right at the beginning of, um, you know, this, uh, answer here that there's nothing but noise, uh, on the internet. And we are being expected to be responsive. Like you mentioned how hashtags have become the new class system and how um, everybody is expecting you to be always on. Now, as an entrepreneur, um, there's, there's a downside to that, obviously. You know what I mean? You, you, know, you, you, you try to, to make yourself available you know, at any time. You reply to emails quickly uh, and text quickly. And you do not, you know, you don't want to be missed out. I mean, people to miss you um, when you are not available. Is this um, part of, you know, what is actually causing the 
disconnect with a lot of entrepreneurs because of the always own culture. Yes. And, and what happens is for a guy like me, so I'm a dinosaur uh, in 2018. I didn't grow up with technology, but I'm a constant learner. I'm, I'm constantly learning. Uh, so I hang out with millennials in my class and they show me all the technology stuff and I show them all the technology stuff. Because I think when we, when we form this bond together, right, um, my way of thinking, these young kids don't understand. And the way these kids think really fast, really quick with these apps and all of this other stuff, we have so much information, that, over, that, that overwhelms me. Where I just, you know, I'm one of these types, everything gets so crazy, I just shut it off. Put the noise away, that's it. I'm done for the day, I'm done for the week, I'm done for the month. I'm not, a, I'm not a stereotypical grind, grind, hustle, grind, grind. Um, wake up, my life has not changed in 25 years. I wake up every morning. I wake up every morning like, what am I going to do today? Yeah, I have projects all over the place. I showed you my wall. That, that's probably like 16 classes. We're going to shoot that for the next couple of days. And, and the thing is, it's the things that I want to bring up because I want to know, what do you think about my website? Because I, I've never done this before. I've, I've never gone digital. I want to know like what it is. So what I've learned uh, just through trial and error, a lot of trial and error, a lot of cash, is that um, I can learn fast by knowing the people that know what they're doing. And, and the thing is we have to weed through so much noise because everybody's a life coach. Everybody's a professional. Everybody's an expert. Everybody, and it's like, where, where do you go? Where do you go, right? So what I like to do is just shake everything up. I, like, what does this guy do? Who is this guy? What is he all about? Because for me, um, I'm more direct. I want to communicate with you one-on-one. -on -one. I'm a hug person. I love to get hugs. I love to give hugs. So the value for me is in the hug. If you're a good hugger and you've learned a lot, and I was a part of your aha moment, I know I'm going to get a really good hug, and it makes me happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, Craig, since you uh, did say you're a dinosaur, I'm going to officially uh, call you Craigosaurus. <laughs> so now, Craig, you also mentioned um, um, in, in passing how learning is actually very important from you. And it doesn't matter who you're learning it from, whether it's somebody older or somebody younger. And it's like the whole reverse, um, you know, mentoring thing that is going on, which I actually like because you're also reciprocating um, the technological learning with, um, you know, the mindset and everything else that, um, you know, comes along with it. Do you think that a lot of people are skimping on the learning part or skimping on looking for mentors that can actually bring them across from where they actually are to where they want to be, like you say, bridging the gap. I'm shaking, I'm shaking my head yes, because the millennial culture, all they want to do is hit the button to the top floor. They don't, they don't realize it's the sweat equity. They don't realize it's the steps, right? You can't just hit the button and go to the elevator and take it to the top floor. You need cuts, bruises, scars. Business is a new language. And it seems nowadays everybody wants to accelerate the learning curve everybody wants to hack the trick the secret sauce and i have it i'm probably one of the only ones that has it it's called hard work that's what you have to do you have to work you have to work your ass off every day that's the secret sauce that's it Absolutely. whatever you put your head to you can overcome you can overcome anything people have every day that's actually beautiful that you say that because, um, I mean, it's, uh, it, I think the whole problem, Craig, is, is Hollywood. Um, somebody's born, all right, and they go to kindergarten and they go to high school, get their first boyfriend, uh, get married, have kids. Um, they get a disease and then they die all in the space of 40 minutes plus commercials. So yeah. everybody is now anticipating that that's how life is supposed to be lived. And when you hear about the Mark Zuckerbergs, the Elon Musk's, the Gary Vaynerchuk, nobody talks about the 1000 episodes that 
um, you know, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk did or the sleepless nights that uh, the people at Facebook have when they're doing, um, you know, uh, marathons for them to come up with new products. People only just look at the final tip of the iceberg. So what sort of advice would you give to uh, people? Somebody knocks on your door right now, Craig, and they're like, what should I do? I've tried blogging. I've tried putting out a website and nobody seems to be liking my hashtags. Um, <laughs> what, what sort of advice do you give to people that come to you, Craig? I tell them to sit down, take out a mirror, look at it, and that's your only competition. There's so much noise that people get so confused with debate. This is primitive stuff, man. It's simple. It's not easy. I mean, our ego is so involved in most everything that we do that if we walk away from our ego, you can get so much stuff done. And I think that's probably the biggest problem that we have in our, in our modern culture in 2018 is our ego. Because we think that in 2018, anything can be accomplished in 10 minutes. It doesn't work that way. Not, not everybody is ha – like the, 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 the benefit that I have about doing lives and, and, and just doing video, I just shoot from the hip. I cuss. I'm not politically correct. I'm none of these things, right? I'm not an expert in anything other than myself. It seems everybody's an expert and has a certificate in something. It's like, well, you know, that, that's great and everything, but I want to have a conversation with you. You can have all the certificates you want. Could have also graduated at the bottom 50% of your class too. And that's a lot of society nowadays. Everybody shows up for that eighth place trophy, right? And it's not just in my country, it's in your country. It's all over the globe now. Everybody wants a quick fix. Nobody wants to go through the struggles, the pain. Nobody wants to uh, appreciate your friend's blessings and, and, and applaud for them. We have a lot of greed, jealousy, envy. Oh, you got a Porsche? I need a, a Bentley. You got a bigger house? I need a, a bigger house. And, and it's like, I've been there, done that. I was a depressed millionaire. I know it's the most ridiculous thing ever, but I wasn't emotionally equipped. I had so many emotional insecurities. I had so many things that I wasn't aware of because nobody taught me. I taught, my, I taught myself through other people's experiences, right? But I didn't have a mentor there. I didn't have somebody holding my hand. And that's the first thing that I tell kids nowadays. Sit down, look in the mirror. Okay, you're over that? Now go get mentors and life coaches. But understand who these people are. Do not get somebody that has not been where you want to go. That's ridiculous. And there's so much in the life coach industry, the mentor industry, there's so much noise that you got to like move and just, you know, use Google. <laughs> understand. But you also have to understand when you use Google, it's SEO. So, I mean, I write my own headlines. As long as I don't believe them, right? As long as I don't believe them. I write my own headlines, just like yourself, just like, you know, most of the other entrepreneurs. We're digital now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Craig, as you can tell, I'm actually <laughs> really intrigued and I need to know more, but obviously we're probably going to be running out of tape soon, but we've got more <laughs> ahead of us. Now, Craig, if somebody's watching this show right now and they're as intrigued as I am I'm trying to figure out how can they uh, business or be the best, um, you know, dad or mom or sister or brother, or just the best human being uh, possible as you can put them on the straight and narrow. What's the best way that people can get a hold of you there, Craig? Uh, it's craigsikowski.com. Um, I think the link is in the bio right down below. Uh, or Amazon. Everybody pays a VIG. All right great stuff i mean obviously i will be putting in all the links uh, at the bottom and also the link to your book that people um everybody pays a vig and uh just for uh clarity a vig is a tax that you pay in order for you to get by on the street and craig will explain to you how all that works out um you know in in, in the real life out there that uh, we that doesn't give participation trophies like he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> now, Craig, I mean, obviously, I know you still have a lot on your chest right now, and we've only just barely scraped the surface. 
what is your go-to advice um, you know, to people that are sort of uh, skimping on their life, skimping on just about everything else and just hoping they press a button, like you said, and it hits the, you know, the, the penthouse uh, from zero to 60 and zero work ethic or <laughs> zero work effort. Um, yeah, what, what sort of uh, words can you just impart people just so that they cross the bridge to you and start getting more from your you university just become unique the world the world now wants everybody's uniqueness they want carbon copies and it, it seems like you know likes comments and shares everybody's on board with you know everybody wants likes comments and shares because it gives them a quick adrenaline right if you have one person concentrate on that one person as an audience that one person will turn into two turn it into four right so what i tell people all the time is look if i offered you a job okay at a penny a day and you doubled it each day for 30 days would you take the job would you take the job i would because i think if you keep doubling those pennies it might take a while but it might be much more than 30 days only 30 days okay so one penny doubled each day for 30 days Right. And it was and, and the job was and the job was shoveling cow manure, okay? Yeah. In the hottest weather, the muggiest weather, and flies all over the place. Would you take the job? Okay. So just my mediocre mathematics tells me that on day two I'll have two dollars. On day three no. I'll have four Day two you'll have two cents. Two cents. Oh. Right. Day day three you'll have four, four cents. And day and you're just doing it for 30 days. Would you take the job? If the tables were turned around and those were dollars, I think I would take the job. But definitely I would take the job. There's a lot to learn um, in that time. And the resilience that comes out of you just shoveling that manure uh, would create the person you want to become to actually handle the work that's ahead of you. So. I think I'll take the job. And you just became a millionaire. By taking that job, you just became a multimillionaire. A penny a day doubled each day for 30 days is compounded interest. It comes out to a few million dollars. Good. We'll sign the text. <laughs> I want everybody on their calculators figuring it out because they're probably like, nah, come on, nah, it's, it's only a penny. <laughs> but it's compounded. It's compounded daily. You know, once you get once you get to two thousand, it goes to four thousand. Then four goes to eight. You might be at the sixteenth, eighteenth, nineteenth day, but then at eight turns into sixteen. Sixteen thousand turns into thirty-two. It's uh, it's intriguing math. Absolutely, and I think it was Albert Einstein that mentioned that compound interest is the eighth one of the world. If you don't understand it, you're paying it. If you understand it. You're getting it. Craig, I can't thank you enough for the time that we spent on the show today. I appreciate it. Thank you so, very much. So many sound bites, so little time, but I guess <laughs> we'll do this um, yet another time. Thank you so much for today. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>